Hey guys, this is Gale Force Online here to bring you another one of my trash builds. Now this one is a Sorcerer main tank. It's actually the first build I ever did and it's probably the build I spent the most gold on. Like a ridiculous amount of gold. Trying to get it to where, it want, where I want it to be. Now if we're looking at our stats, I've got 25k max magicka and max stamina which is very high pulls for a tank and 50k max health which is pretty much where you want it to be as a tank for max health my spell and physical resistance about 35k 31k 500 sorry and i'll keep it at that level is because healers usually use a minor ward or minor resolve which increases it to the 33k where i want it to be um, spell and weapon damage and critical is not really applicable much. Um, I won't be doing a lot of damage with this build. It is predominantly just tanking and surviving. Now, moving on to my sets. Oh, sorry, something worth noting. Um, I've got two Munda Stones active, and that's because I'm using the um, Twiceborn Star sets. So, here we go. Let's start with the consumables first. Uh, use the um, essence of movability because it makes me immune to CC for 10 seconds. So, usually use that if I need to pick up an ally. And it also restores health and magicka. Now, the reason I want to restore magicka is because I use the unstable clan fear. And if I need to do a mass amount of heal, I need to have enough magicka in order to proc that. That's why I use the magicka instead of stamina. The food I use is the Bewitched Sugar Skulls, which is very expensive, but outperforms most giant stat foods. So if you take by comparison, um, this is the normal giant stat food, and the Bewitched Sugar Skulls does a little bit better on all three resources, and also gives me some health recovery on top of that. Alright, I apologise for the cat. It's a little kitty sitting right there, she's very keen to find out what we're doing here today. Alright, moving on to the item sets, so uh, like I mentioned, the Twiceborn Star set, so you sort of board on the front bar with a reduced um, damage glyph, and also the resistance trait just to get it up to that 31500 where I want it to be. And like I said, you can have two Munda Stones, I use Magicka and Health as those stones. Then on the back bar I use an ice star for twice born star. Uh, the reason I do that is a fully charged heavy attack target. Not really my go to taunt but it's nice to have there in case. But more importantly if I do block then that drains from my magic pool instead of my stamina pool. So front bar, blocking, running out of stamina, I'll swap over and then start drawing it from Magicka. Alright, now I'll use Mighty Tude in two pieces as my heavy helm set, so as my monster helm set. Um, I use the tri stat glyphs on them just simply because I have the money to throw around and put them on. Um, so this grants me major resolve and major ward at all times and also a nice little health boost there as well. The reason I use this is that it frees up one slot for a skill instead of me having to constantly proc it in order to get my resistances up. Um, then twice more star again and then I use green pact as my last set. Um, while I have a food buff active, it increases my max health by 2500 and some additional health recovery on top of that. So like I said again, try stat glyphs, I've got them on all my items and all my items are up to gold. Um, also using the new glyphs that was released in Greymore which reduces the cost of all three resources of all abilities and um, using the true and traits on the jewelry as well which increases all three resources so with this build i wanted to get it as balanced as possible so that i've got max stats on all of my 
stats possible and trying to push them to as far as I can. Alright, now moving on to the skills. On the front bar, it just appears armor um, with the uh, major fracture, major breach, which reduces the target's physical and spell resistance. Um, then the heroic slash, um, which reduces the target's output damage by 15% and also grants minor heroism, which increases my ultimate regen by 1 every 1 1.5 seconds. Then I use the spiked bone shield just simply out of nostalgia. Um, the other shield tends to work better with the sword and board setup, but I just like using this one um, since it also grants a synergy and if an ally activates a synergy, it restores some resources for them as well. Alright, then moving on to the Exhilarating Drain from the new Vampire skill line in Greymore. Um, this spot is a bit of a flex spot, there's many other skills you can put in there. I like putting it in there because it gives me a nice bit of health back and also generates some ultimate. So which is really nice to use in the middle of combat but it does take 3 seconds to cast. So make sure when you use this skill you have those 3 seconds available because you won't be able to move quickly out of the way if the boss does something. Um, something worth noting that if you do block it does break the skill but just like I said be careful when you want to use it. And then this is my favourite skill on the build is the unstable plane fear. Now this summons a little dinosaur that stays with you the entire time, um, doesn't do a lot of damage, I said 995 there and um, it does do a power spot which can CC enemies, but predominantly I use this skill as a heal and if you activate it again then um, you can heal for 18k there, which is a really really nice heal to have, one of the biggest instant heals in the game. Now for my ultimate, um, this is a bit of a flex spot, I like having this one there, um, not so much for the ultimate ability itself, but the minor protection that it grants, and also having this skill there and I'm blocking, gives me a nice little damage shield of an extra 5000 on top of that. So that one's up to you, you can do many changes with it, I just like having that extra 5k damage shield and minor protection. Now on the back bar, um, use Inner Beast with the Stamina Morph, um, simply because I run a lot of magical skills on the back bar, so if I need to have a taunt or if I need to taunt multiple enemies, then I've got the entire stamina pool to pull from. Uh, the second one is Crushing Shock. Um, this is a bit of a flex spot. The main reason I use this skill is to interrupt enemies at range. So usually you get the proc which is the red lines that come off the enemy and need to interrupt them. So this one will do it at range. Another skill that I like to use here if I don't need to use the interrupts is the Cleanse which um, removes three negative effects from all your allies and also heals them for 5% of their max health. So this is a nice one to have to avoid CCs from bosses and so forth. Now Restraining Prison is one of the Sorcerer class skill lines, one of the Sorcerer class skills. Um, this is a soft CC uh, but it works at very nice range or long distance. So what it does is you can stay in a very far range, you can block an enemy in place and pretty much hold them there. Now they can still move and they can still attack from there, but if it's any melee enemy then they can't reach you and reach your allies in order to attack. Moving on to the next skill which is a new one that was introduced in the vampire skill line in Greymore, which is the, um, it's a heart CC which uses Magicka. Now we've been looking, we've been waiting for a non-class skill to do that. We've had the um, stamina version of that in the Fighters Guild Ring of Protection. So this one is a very nice one to have but it's very short in range. But it is a hard CC so if you alternate between the CCs 
you can avoid the global cooldown a little bit. There's probably a two, three second delay between the two. So you can hold your enemies for quite a while before they can reach your allies. And then the last one is just my clan fear again. Now you need to have the skill equipped on both sides because if it's not equipped on your back bar and you swap from your front bar to the back bar, it'll actually kill your clan fear. And then once you need to go back to your front bar, you need to resummon them and use that 3k magicka you used initially. So it's good to have them on both sides and just having them available at all times. The other good thing about the clan fear that I like is that it's an extra target. So if you have a mob of enemies coming down on your allies, it's one extra target for an enemy to target. So it reduces the amount of enemies attacking you by one. And then this is the new ultimate from the vampire skill line. Now I used to run the barrier from the support skills, the replenishing barrier, which is really nice shield coming up for all the um, allies in the group. And being a sorcerer it reduces the ultimate cost by 15%. So it's a very low ultimate cost and I do generate some ultimate from that as well. So it's a very nice skill to have for group utility, but I like this new skill. It's a lot more selfish in the build and a lot more survivability for you instead of your allies. But it is a really nice skill for me to use because it increases your health, magic and stamina by 10k and then whatever bonus is applied to on top of that. Alright, so basically on the front bar, um, you do your hard turn, your slice, um, you've got a shield available for you, you and then activate your drain, but be certain when you use it because it does take up time. You can see as soon as you block, you can break it through, but then you don't get the ultimate and the health from that. Alright, on the back bar, you've got your ranged taunt. I can also block using magicka instead of stamina. I've got my range interrupt. The range CC, and once I'm close, I can use my hard CC. And then still the clan fear is available there. Alright, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, if you have any suggestions for builds I need to do in the future, let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content I'm putting out, please hit the like and subscribe. Be safe and take care. Bye.